Well guys, I'm down here at Pondwood Fishery on their catfish lake. Gonna try and see if I can't pick a catfish up here. And as you can see, blazing hot sky. And a lot of angles just sitting around, nothing much happening. I guess it doesn't happen till the evening, but when it's bright like this anyway. And are they down here around the edge, out in the middle? Seems a big carp moving over there. Out in the top, I sort of out in that sort of direction over there. All hot and still that I feel there's always a chance of a fish, possibly later in the afternoon. It's now, well, it's grand pulling time. It's uh, quarter to two in the afternoon, I've only just got here. Probably still a tad early. And I've got uh, fish bait on one and lunch meat on the other. I've got them both around the corner, assuming that because the sun is going around up this way, behind my back, that very few places I've got a sort of shadow lines here. Maybe around the back edge of that island, the sun's coming that way. And I'm figuring around the corner here as well, might be worth a shot, who knows. But first thing is, just check this out. This is unbelievable. I'm gonna start the day as you wish to continue. A foot long sausage roll, guys. Look at it, a foot long sausage roll. Man, if I could catch a catfish that big, I'd be pleased. So, lunch time for me, a cup of tea, one of those rolls and sit back and chill. In this shot you can see the tiny little pin-like eyes, little ridges on the bottom lip there, and you can see those big long feelers that a catfish detects their prey with. Small catfish, but listen, catfish from another venue. Just as slippery and slimy as all the others. Nice, a good little scrap of a size as well. And that was on that hair rig luncheon meat. Nothing on my section of bluey, but fish is a fish, isn't it guys? Let's get it back. And it's almost like that first catfish was the signal, the catalyst as it were. Oh yeah, I like that one. The cat catalyst for those catfish to come on the feed and other anglers started to get bites, started to convert fishy bites into fish in the net. And here goes another one being returned. We've got a second fish hooked up on lunch and meat, hair rig. That's a bit better with the light. Obviously, I've had a miss, miss couple of bites, tweak fast ones. I've hidden them too fast. You've got to let them actually move off with it slowly. But the fact that I've uh, got the hook away from the meat, I think, has made the difference. And we've got the uh, 555 to Nairobi going over the top by the sounds of things.
Right boys, it's net time. This one's a little bit bigger this time. There we go. Afternoon sunshine and a nice catfish there. That's two. Yes, it's going to be a chance for a few casts yet. One good thing about the summer in the UK, it doesn't get dark till later. And of course these guys are nocturnal so they come out in the dark as well. I shan't be fishing in the dark. I'm going boat fishing tomorrow. I think we're going place fishing. But let's get this guy back. For the moment I'm catfishing. Well guys, never let it sit, but I'm going to be dying of starvation because I've got on the go here baked beans, Wait for this, what I'm going to put in with it is, look what that says, steak and owl pie. And do you know how I'm going to cook it? Hang on a minute, I'm going to whack the whole lot in together. Nestle it amongst those beans and stick it to the bottom of the saucepan. When it's perfectly st stuck to the bottom of the saucepan, that bobbin will go up, I'll strike, miss the fish and knock my food over on the side and it'll be all over the dirt. It's the second time I've been here and I forgot a spoon, a knife and a fork. So I've used, I use, I shape this into a, a little sort of spoon or fork. Or a scoop, I'm going to call it a scoop. Obviously kids don't do this because it probably could be sharp. It's me doing it, it's what I'm doing. And I make that a scoop so at least I can have a go at eating this stuff and get it in my mouth. I'm sort of hoping I don't get a bite for a little while. Anyway, it's well on the cook here. It's definitely stuck to the pan now. It's just a shame I didn't bring a pint of Guinness or something with me because that would have gone down nice. And that is hot now. Switch off. It's quite weird, guys. It does actually taste of steak and ale. Hot steak and ale. While we leave that angler to his fine dining, shall we say, let's check out some of the places you could find catfish. And this is what he was talking about. Those shadows on the water thrown by that willow tree with the sun going down the west, that could be an area where the catfish hang out, as could just underneath overhangs, alongside tree roots. And I personally believe that they might be around the edges during the bright, you know, the bright parts of the day and then come out to hunt at night. And as we went on through the evening, late afternoon into the evening, more bites seemed to be coming. And here you can see this gentleman's just about to return another small catfish. And same sort of time as I was getting mine. It was almost like throwing a switch. And I think the catfish anglers who do it regularly will tell you that, that, you know, there are periods when they go absolutely mad on the feed. So that's how I got the bait rig there. I'll show you that at the end of the film, just rigged uh, on a standoff here. Just sink a line. <clears throat> Take a while for that to come tight onto that bait because I'm actually uh, freelining with no weight on there whatsoever. I'm sitting next to the rod, so I'm not going to put it on back wind. And goes my washing up bottle top. And I'll just shorten up a little bit. Just so I've got the drop back bite there as well, see. That's a smaller piece of lunch of meat on this one. and the fish out really quite tight. I should see the rod pull around as well. Right, back to uh, T, solidified. I personally have no trouble fishing close in on the margins and even these corners, these little tucked away parts of the lake, on any lake, not just this lake, 
but over where that sort of scum residue is on the top of the surface there, up against the rushes, could be a good place for catfish. I think they just like to lie in places where there's sort of snags around, tree roots, weed beds, that sort of thing. And that's why I fish these very, well, they're fairly lightweight. I can actually add weights to those with pieces of plasticine or Play-Doh if I wanted. The main thing you need to remember, if you're catfishing, use strong line. I've got at least 18 pounds on there, on my two reels. Um, and you need a decent sized rod. You don't really need a huge power pole of a rod. You can also see some of the bites free lining by watching the line where it enters the water from the rod top. Also, banks of rushes are all good pointers in a feature that a catfish might like lying near. You just gotta put your bait there and hope he takes it. Guy's got a really big fish on here. I'm trying to get a bit of footage for you. Well, there's the uh, steak and pie, and the bobbin went straight up on a on a good fish there. See if I can get him out of whatever snag he's trying to trick it, dig into. Well, he's inside. Rod didn't break. I think I got him out. Yeah. I'm just going to back this one off. Move him out of the way. Bit of a softer rod, this one, just a regular carp rod. But nice to fight a fish on this one. Wow, well, he's certainly going well. I wonder if it's bigger than I thought it was. It's only got a bit of pressure on there. Do a snag there. Feels like he's twanging or something. Wow, he, this fish is digging. Have a look at it before we uh, see the hook ping out. Stirring the mud up on the bottom. Now taking off a little bit of line. You seem to want to get back down that corner. I don't think it's a big fish, but who knows? Put back my now he's not a big fish. Let's get the net. Come on. He's swimming, got it. There we go. He is actually guys a bit bigger. Bit bigger than the others. It's worth it. My beans getting cold, boy. Well, oh, this one's a decent size. That's a bit better, isn't it? Not as big as I thought he was, but big enough. There you go. Proper decent sized catfish here at Pondwood. See the size of this mouth. And look at the rough edge there. Very, very rough there. Big mouth and get pretty much any fish he wants in there. Well, guys, I'm supposed to go place fishing, but I don't think I want to go. I think I want to spend the night here. So there you go. If I can get him up for a picture, will do. That's a nice fish. Yeah. Yeah, I can't get right in the lens for you, but you can see it's a decent size one. Ooh. Need a plate of chips to go with him. <laughs> Let's get it back. So, epic fight on that one. You didn't get to see much of it on the camera because he was trying to back into the snags, but we're well pleased with that. Got another fish on, guys, but I've got a feeling this is a smaller piece of lunch of meat, and I've got a feeling this could be a carp. It was an absolute screamer. 
I may be wrong, but I feel it's a carp. Take a look at it. If you'll let me take a look at it. It's only zooming around. Oh, I got a four pound carp. I haven't seen him yet. The feral bed in the world. Yeah, carp. Certainly going well. Here he comes, common carp. And he's nearly, he's nearly, he's nearly, he's in. Well, it's turning into not a bad old session. Hook falls out, not the world's greatest mouth, and it is a common carp there. Good scrapper, screaming take. Keep him in there, keep him low. Just slide him straight back. In he goes. Job done. Well, that's a pretty epic battle with that last catfish. I could actually feel the line chafing and rubbing through whatever it was under the water, weed beds, twigs, snags, something that catfish was really trying to bury in. The rod nearly broke, had to really hit and hold. Didn't get much action for you guys. It's the way it was, the camera was all over the place, I was all over the place, but we got it in the net. Now bait was uh, spam, and that's just a lunch of meat for those around the world who wonder what spam. Spam is spam, 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 spam. Anybody who watched Monty Python knows what spam is. It's lunch of meat, pork lunch of meat, and very fatty, great bait for loads of fish, and especially catfish. But I want to show you for beginners, this is my little rig, my little setup, dead basic. I'm no big super duper catfish expert. I just go out and catch catfish, that's all I do. I'll show you how I put mine on the hook and how important it is to try and keep the hook outside a bigger bait. I'll show you what I mean. So here is my bait. It's my piece of my uh, lunch of meat there. Now, for argument's sake, let's just say you're using cubes. I'm just gonna cut this one here into a cube, that's like barbell size, carp size, that, you know, regular size. What you would normally do, you'd have your hook here and you just push it through. I used to go 45 degrees across the corners there, push it through and then I personally used to bring it out and just leave it so there's a little bit of a point showing there. So you can cast that out relatively, you know, decent distance, even free lining. So that'd be a standard size, bit small for catfish, I've got to say, a bit small, but for the catfish, I was catching, and the general stuff, I don't know, fish to throw 40 pounds, which is just, that's all I catch, fish up to about 40s in the UK. Um, I use nice big chunks. Now, just pull that one off. I'm gonna be using a section of meat there. So I've, I'll get almost four baits out of that. So I'm just gonna slice it across. It's very greasy, very fatty, and that's why they like it. Now, if you keep them out of the sun, that's the main thing, to keep your bait out of the sun, if you do get it, let's say it goes grey like that piece, don't be afraid, rather than throw it away, to, to, to just shave a little bit off like this. Just shave around the meat there until you get the fresh meat at the end, or underneath rather. You're, taking the, you're just taking a little bit off the angle there. I'm only doing this to show you, I wouldn't be using this for bait unless it was small fish like Ted. But you can shave bits off, throw that in as loose feed if it's loud, and um, you know, why not just keep it as spares? You can even freeze it and use it in your ground bait for other species as well. I'm not gonna mention a mate because they're not paying us to mention it, but um, I do like a wide gate hook there. That's a barbless and very strong in the wire. Then I've got my braid about, I don't know, not quite two feet long, 18 inches, probably something like that. Nice heavy duty swivel there. And what the problem is, look, wherever you put that hook into here, it's probably going to come flying out on the cast. So you need a bait stop. But a standard bait stop for like boilies would be these. Now they're going to be very small. Let's just get a bit of paper because I'm getting covered in gunk. I'm just going to break one off and show you in close up how small they are. Right. Oh, yellow on yellow. Love it. Lovely this one. Yellow on yellow. Right, I'll just put the bait stop down there and sh I'll zoom in on this one. Now just there, you should be able to see, I'm just going to point it out with my finger there, 
is a standard bait stock which you use with boilies. And a hair rig goes through that little slot there in the middle, you know, it's rest in the middle. Think of a pair of miniature dumbbells. Now that on here is going to pull straight through. It's not wide enough, okay? But you know what? Just look down on the ground for a piece of twig or grass, just like this, because that's all I've used for years and years like that. And I cut mine, I'm just gonna cut the end off of that, just a little bit less than the width of that piece of luncheon meat. So I'm gonna cut it like this, watch. Yeah. Now that piece there is my bait stop, and that spreads the load when you cast. So how do you get the hook on there? Well, that's easy. I use one of these. It's a baiting needle. And as you can see, it's got a little grip here. I slide it down to the end. You can see it's a little hook in the end. No barb, nothing on it like that. It's not a barb on it. So what I do is I'm gonna push that through. You could do it crossways. I like to cast a decent distance. And if I, if I do it crossways, it sort of spins in the air a bit. So I like to have it a, a long bait. I like to cast it as a long bait. So I'm gonna push that through from one side to the other. I'll show you what I'm gonna do. Dead easy, and try and get it to come out in the middle if you can. So there we go. I hope you're gonna see this, just slide it. So you have to turn around that way, you should be able to see me better. Right the way through the meat, there it comes out just here, look, just there. Okay. Then I'm gonna take a spool of, everybody's probably got some spare lying around. About, I don't know, a foot, pull a foot off. Snip it there. I'm gonna tie just a regular overhand knot in it. Much easier to do when you're fishing than it is trying to do it for the camera. Okay, just like that. Then I just tie a regular overhand loop. Come through, got it. Just like that. And then I'm gonna put my bait stock, which is a piece of twig in the middle like that can you see that just there i'm putting the knot down here the knot will slide down slide down slide down there it's just reached the middle i i tug it so that it jams up nice and tight okay and then all i do is i just take a loop of this line put it into the end of the baiting needle pull the whole shebang through like this if you can see that draw it right through Take the needle off. I've got my piece of fishing line there, and you'll just see. Hopefully, if you watch that twig, it pulls up against that there. So that allows you to get your hook. You have to do this every time. That's what I do. And I allow, let's say, that much just there. Can you see that? Hopefully, you can see that there. Just a few millimeters to tie a loop of line. I go around once, twice, and then I just put a half hitch in it. All fishermen use their mouth, I can't now, just can't bend down that far. So I'm just pulling the loop there tight. I just go once, and I go round, half hitch. It's so easy to do, it's really quickly once you're done. And that's right in the bend of the hook. Other people have got different ways of doing it. This is just my way of doing it. Take the what we call the tag end, snip it off. And there, hopefully you can see that, is my hair rigged bait. The hook is away from the bait. The catfish comes along, sucks the whole lot down, and the hook is not stuck in here when you miss them on the strike. This is for more when they're very, very twitchy. And you can see I can cast that quite a long way. There's the hook. You can put this, if you wanted, just almost touching there. It's entirely up to you. It's just what you fancy. But round about that distance does me. And the other little tip is I do is this. And I've done this for years with paste baits. This is all greasy and fatty. I rub it over the hook and I rub it into the leader here. You know, the bit of braid, because those bits of fat, they go in there. And if a fish does come along and he goes around the outside and picks it up and he starts feeling this and it doesn't taste right, especially with the catfish with those feelers, he might, he might blow it out. He might blow it out, I don't know. Well, the last three didn't because I caught them all. But that's what I do, get a bit of a grease off the fat and just smear out the line, it doesn't hurt. Bit of smell in the water. And there you go, guys. That, that there is my catfish bait. Hair reed with a twig at the base. I can cast that quite a long way. And then when I strike, you'll see here, look, I can pull quite hard 
and strike the hook in, but that twig, if I'm gonna pull this without hooking myself, look, it, it takes a hell of a lot of pulling to cut through. With the small bait stops like these, compared with the twig, the twig spreads the load. Give it a go, guys. So there you go, a nice, easy, simple supermarket bait. Lunch and meat for catfish. You can see it works, loads of guys use it over here in the UK. Some of you guys in different countries might want to try it as well. Give it a go and try hair rigging it. Look, if you're catfishing around the world, they're probably greedy, scoffy creatures and they just pick everything up and move off with it. Over here, our fish are catch and release, so they get to learn things. They get pretty twitchy and that's why we use those rigs and put them on a hair rig. Enjoy your catfishing. They are a strong fish. Make sure you beginners out there use at least 15 pound line. They are very, very strong. I believe they're stronger than carp, to be honest. And they know where the snags are because they live near them. Thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. TA Outdoors. Don't forget to watch that one. And we get the odd fishing one up there as well. We'll see you again on the riverbank, the beach, the boat, wherever there's water.